woolen coverlet with floral designs, a quilt of cotton wool, a woolen coverlet ornamented with animal figures, a woolen coverlet with double borders, a woolen coverlet with a single border, a silken sheet studded with gems, a sheet made with silk threads and studded with gems, a dancer's rug, an elephant rug, a horse rug, a chariot rug, a rug of antelope hide, a spread made of the hide of the Kadali deer, a bed with a canopy above and red bolsters at both ends. Master Gotama surely gains them at will, without trouble or difficulty. Brahman, those high and luxurious kinds of bedding are rarely obtained by those who have gone forth into hermit life, and if they are obtained, they are not allowed. But, Brahman, there are three kinds of high and luxurious beds that at present I gain at will, without trouble or difficulty. What three? The celestial high and luxurious bed, the divine high and luxurious bed, and the noble high and luxurious bed. These are the three kinds of high and luxurious beds that at present I gain at will, without trouble or difficulty. But, Master Gotama, what is the celestial high and luxurious bed, that at present you gain at will, without trouble or difficulty? Here, Brahman, when I am dwelling in dependence on a village or town, in the morning I dress, take my bowl and robe, and enter that village or town for alms. After the meal, when I have returned from the alms round, I enter a grove. I collect some grass or leaves that I find there into a pile and then sit down. Having folded my legs crosswise and straightened my body, I establish mindfulness in front of me. Then, secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from harmful states, I enter and dwell in the first jhana, which consists of bliss and happiness born of seclusion, accompanied by thought and examination. With the subsiding of thought and examination, I enter and dwell ih the second jhana, which has internal placidity and unification of mind and consists of bliss and happiness born of samadhi, without thought and examination. With the fading away as well of bliss, I dwell equanimous and, mindful and completely comprehending, I experience happiness with the body. I enter and dwell in the third jhana of which the noble ones declare. He is equanimous, mindful, one who dwells happily. With the abandoning of pleasure and pain, and with the previous passing away of joy and dejection, I enter and dwell in the fourth jhana, neither painful nor pleasant, which has purification of mindfulness by indifference. Then, Brahman, when I am in such a state, if I walk back and forth, on that occasion my walking back and forth is celestial. If I am standing, on that occasion my standing is celestial. If I am sitting, on that occasion my sitting is celestial. If I lie down, on that occasion this is my celestial high and luxurious bed. This is that celestial high and luxurious bed that at present I can gain at will without trouble or difficulty. It is astounding and amazing. Master Gotama. Who else, apart from Master Gotama, can gain at will, without trouble or difficulty, such a celestial high and luxurious bed? But, Master Gotama, what is the divine high and luxurious bed, that at present you gain at will, without trouble or difficulty? Here, Brahman, when I am dwelling in dependence on a village or town, in the morning I dress, take my bowl and robe, and enter that village or town for arms. After the meal, when I have returned from the arms round, I enter a grove. I collect some grass or leaves that I find there into a pile and then sit down. Having folded my legs crosswise and straightened my body, I establish mindfulness in front of me. Then I dwell pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with loving-kindness, likewise the second quarter, the third quarter, 
and the fourth quarter. Thus above, below, across, and everywhere, and to all as to myself, I dwell pervading the entire world with a mind imbued with loving kindness, vast, exalted, measureless, without enmity, without ill will. I dwell pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with compassion. Dot. Dot. With a mind imbued with altruistic joy. Dot. Dot. With a mind imbued with indifference. Likewise the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter. Thus above. Below. Across. And everywhere. And to all as to myself. I dwell pervading the entire world with a mind imbued with indifference, vast, exalted, measureless, without enmity, without ill will. Then, Brahman, when I am in such a state, if I walk back and forth, on that occasion my walking back and forth is divine. If I am standing, on that occasion my standing is divine. If I am sitting, on that occasion my sitting is divine. If I lie down, on that occasion this is my divine high and luxurious bed. This is that divine high and luxurious bed that at present I can gain at will, without trouble or difficulty. It is astounding and amazing. Master Gotama. Who else, apart from Master Gotama, can gain at will, without trouble or difficulty, such a high and luxurious bed? But, Master Gotama, what is the noble high and luxurious bed that at present you gain at will, without trouble or difficulty? Here, Brahman, when I am dwelling in dependence on a village or town, in the morning I dress, take my bowl and robe, and enter that village or town for alms. After the meal, when I have returned from the alms round, I enter a grove. I collect some grass or leaves that I find there into a pile and then sit down. Having folded my legs crosswise and straightened my body, I establish mindfulness in front of me. Then I understand thus. T have abandoned greed, cut it off at the root, made it like a palm stump, obliterated it so that it is no more subject to future arising. I have abandoned hatred, cut it off at the root, made it like a palm stump, obliterated it so that it is no more subject to future arising. I have abandoned delusion, cut it off at the root, made it like a palm stump, obliterated it so that it is no more subject to future arising. Then, Brahman, when I am in such a state, if I walk back and forth, on that occasion my walking back hd forth is noble. If I am standing, on that occasion my standing is noble. If I am sitting, on that occasion my sitting is noble. If I lie down, on that occasion this is my noble high and luxurious bed. This is that noble high and luxurious bed that at present I can gain at will, without trouble or difficulty. It is astounding and amazing. Master Gotama. Who else, apart from Master Gotama, can gain at will, without trouble or difficulty, such a noble high and luxurious bed? Excellent! Master Gotama! Excellent! Master Gotama! Master Gotama has made the D-carat Amma clear in many ways. As though he were turning upright what had been overthrown, revealing what was hidden, showing the way to one who was lost or holding up a lamp in the darkness so those with good eyesight can see forms. We now go for refuge to Master Gotama, F, to the Dharma, and to the Sangha of Bhikkhus. Let Master Gotama consider us lay followers who from today have gone for refuge for life. Saraba. On one occasion the Lord was dwelling at Rajagaha on Mount Vulture Peak. Now on that occasion a ascetic named Saraba had recently left this dharma and discipline. He had been telling an assembly in Rajagaha. I have learned the dharma of the ascetics who follow the Sakyan son. After I learned their dharma, 
I left the Dharma and discipline. Then, one morning, a number of bhikkhus dressed, took their bowls and robes, and entered Rajagaha for arms. They then heard the ascetic Saraba making such a statement to an assembly in Rajagaha. When those bhikkhus had walked for arms in Rajagaha, after their meal, when they returned from their arms round, they approached the Lord, paid homage to him, sat down to one side, and said to him, Bhante, the ascetic Saraba, who recently left this Dharma and discipline, has been telling an assembly in Rajagaha. I have learned the Dharma of the ascetics who follow the Sakyan son. After I learned the Dharma, I left the Dharma and discipline. It would be good, Bhante, if the Lord would go to the ascetics park on the bank of the Sapinika river and, out of compassion, approach the ascetic Saraba. The Lord consented by silence. Then, in the evening, the Lord emerged from seclusion and went to the ascetics park on the bank of the Sapinika river. He approached the ascetic Saraba, sat down on the seat that was prepared for him, and said to him, Is it true, Saraba, that you have been saying, I have learned the Dharma of the ascetics who follow the Sakyan son. After I learned the Dharma, I left the Dharma and discipline. When this was said, the ascetic Saraba was silent. A second time the Lord said to the ascetic Saraba, Tell me, Saraba, how have you learned the Dharma of the ascetics who follow the Sakyan son? If you have not learned it completely, I will complete it. But if you have learned it completely, I will rejoice. But a second time the ascetic Saraba was silent. A third time the Lord said to the ascetic Saraba, Tell me, Saraba, how have you learned the Dharma of the ascetics who follow the Sakyan son? If you have not learned it completely, I will complete it. But if you have learned it completely, I will rejoice. But a third time the ascetic Saraba was silent. Us. Then those ascetics said to the ascetic Saraba, The ascetic Gotama has offered to give you whatever you might ask him for, friend Saraba. Speak, friend Saraba. How have you learned the Dharma of the ascetics who follow the Sakyan son? If you have not learned it completely, the ascetic Gotama will complete it for you. But if you have learned it completely, he will rejoice. When this was said, the ascetic Saraba sat silenced, disconcerted, hunched over, downcast, glum, and speechless. Then the Lord, having understood that the ascetic Saraba sat silenced, disconcerted, hunched over, downcast, glum, and speechless, said to those ascetics. Ascetics, if anyone should say about me, though you claim to be perfectly enlightened, you are not fully enlightened about these things I might question him closely about this matter, interrogate him, and cross-examine him. When he is being closely questioned by me, interrogated, and cross-examined, it is impossible and inconceivable that he would not incur one or another of three consequences. He would either answer evasively and divert the discussion to an irrelevant subject, or display anger, hatred, and bitterness, or would sit silenced, disconcerted, hunched over, downcast, glum, and speechless, just like the ascetic Saraba. If, ascetics, anyone should say about me, though you claim to be one whose taints are destroyed, you have not fully destroyed these taints, I might question him closely about this matter, interrogate him, and cross-examine him. When he is being closely questioned by me, interrogated, and cross-examined, it is impossible and inconceivable that he would not incur one or another of three consequences. He would either answer evasively and divert the discussion to an irrelevant subject, or display anger, hatred, and bitterness, or would sit silenced, disconcerted, hunched over, downcast, glum, and speechless, 
just like the ascetic Saraba. If ascetics anyone should say about me, the Dharma does not lead one who practices it to the complete destruction of suffering, the goal for the sake of which you teach it. I might question him closely about this matter, interrogate him, and cross-examine him. When he is being closely questioned by me, interrogated, and cross-examined, it is impossible and inconceivable that he would not incur one or another of three consequences. He would either answer evasively and divert the discussion to an irrelevant subject, or display anger, hatred, and bitterness, or would sit silenced, disconcerted, hunched over, downcast, glum, and speechless, just like the ascetic Saraba. Then the Lord, having roared his lion's roar three times in the ascetic's park on the bank of the Sapinica River, rose up into the air and departed. Then, soon after the Lord had left, those ascetics gave the ascetic Saraba a thorough verbal lashing, saying, Just as an old jackal in a huge forest might think, I will roar a lion's roar and yet would only howl and yelp like a jackal, so, friend Saraba, claiming in the absence of the ascetic Gotama, I will roar a lion's roar, you only howled and yelped like a jackal. Just as, friend Saraba, a chick might think, I will sing like a cock, and yet would only sing like a chick, so, friend Saraba, claiming in the absence of the ascetic Gotama, I will sing like a cock, you only sang like a chick. Just as, friend Saraba, a bull might think to bellow deeply in an empty cowshed, so, friend Saraba, in the absence of the ascetic Gotama you thought you could bellow deeply. In this way those ascetics gave the ascetic Saraba a thorough verbal lashing. Kesaputi R.S. On one occasion the Lord was wandering on tour among the Kosalans together with a large Sangha of monks when he reached the town of the Kalamas named Kesaputta. The Kalamas of Kesaputta heard. It is said that the ascetic Gotama, the son of the Sakyans who went forth from a Sakyan family, has arrived at Kesaputta. Now a good report about that master Gotama has circulated thus. That lord is an Arahant, perfectly enlightened. Dot, dot, as at, dot, 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 and reveals a Brahmacharya that is perfectly complete and pure. Now it is good to see such arahants. Then the Kalamas of Kesaputta approached the Lord. Some paid homage to the Lord and sat down to one side. Dot, dot, as at, dot, dot, dot. Some kept silent and sat down to one side. Sitting to one side, the Kalamas said to the Lord. Bhante, there are some ascetics and Brahmins who come to Kesaputta. They explain and elucidate their own doctrines, but disparage, denigrate, deride, and denounce the doctrines of others. But then some other ascetics and Brahmins come to Kesaputta, and they too explain and elucidate their own doctrines, but disparage, denigrate, deride, and denounce the doctrines of others, we are perplexed and in doubt, Bhante, as to which of these good ascetics speak truth and which speak falsehood. It is fitting for you to be perplexed, Kalamas, fitting for you to be in doubt. Doubt has arisen in you about a perplexing matter come. Kalamas. Do not go by oral tradition, by lineage of teaching, by hearsay, by a collection of scriptures by logical reasoning, by inferential reasoning, by reasoned cogitation, by the acceptance of a view after pondering it, by the seeming competence of a speaker, or because you think. The ascetic is our guru. But when, kalamas, you know for yourselves. These things are harmful. These things are blameworthy. These things are censured by the wise. These things, if accepted and undertaken, lead to harm and suffering, then you should abandon them. What do you think, Kalamas? 
When greed arises in a person, is it for his welfare or for his harm? For his harm, Bhante. Kalamas, a greedy person, overcome by greed, with mind obsessed by it, destroys life, takes what is not given, transgresses with another's wife, and speaks falsehood. And he encourages others to do likewise. Will that lead to his harm and suffering for a long time? Yes, Bhante. What do you think, Kalamas? When hatred arises in a person, is it for his welfare or for his harm? For his harm, Bhante. Kalamas, a person who is full of hate, overcome by hatred, with mind obsessed by it, destroys life. Dot. Dot. And he encourages others to do likewise. Will that lead to his harm and suffering for a long time? Single quote. Yes, Bhante. What do you think, Kalamas? When delusion arises in a person, is it for his welfare or for his harm? For his harm, Bhante. Kalamas, a person who is deluded, overcome by delusion, with mind obsessed by it, destroys life. Dot. Dot. And he encourages others to do likewise. Will that lead to his harm and suffering for a long time? Yes, Bhante. What do you think, Kalamas? Are these things beneficial or harmful? Harmful, Bhante. Blameworthy or blameless? Blameworthy, Bhante. Censured or praised by the wise? Censured.